So weirdly, this is my first year outside of education, but I have been in education for the past 19 years. And so I thought I would collate my top 55 organization tips for students. I really hope that you find this helpful. First of all, I would recommend using a lever arch folder or a binder to store all of your notes if you go into school and you're having to bring notes around with you. So this is one big folder that you can bring with you every day, a day folder is what we used to call it at my school. And then you have dividers for each of your subjects. This means that you only have to bring one file into school as opposed to carting around like four or five. And hopefully it will also be small enough that you can fit it straight into your school bag. And being able to put it in your bag obviously reduces the risk of you leaving it too. I'd really recommend making sure that this is marked with your name and your year or an address or an email address so that it can be returned to you as well if somebody finds it. Number two, leading on from that, change around your folder every week. So every Friday or every Sunday, set aside some time where you'll go through and you'll take out any sheets that you don't need anymore, file those away into your main folders and, and also put in anything that you might need for that coming week. So printouts from textbooks or extra research you've done, maybe stuff that you've studied in the past, notes that you've had in the past, which might come in useful for that week of study. Obviously you don't want it to get too full um, and too heavy, but also you want to make sure that you don't miss anything. Three, at school I also like to keep a revision folder on me. This was a poly pocket folder where I kept printouts of all of my neat revision notes so that I could revise on the go at school if I wanted to. But you could easily put these sheets in your day folder too, maybe in like a separate section right at the back, especially at the beginning of the year when you obviously don't have as much. Number four, make notes as you are going along and revise for all of your topic tests. I know that these topic tests don't seem as important at the time, but if you revise for them, if you make your resources then, they're really great for keeping you accountable to make revision notes and make resources so that at the end of the year you don't have like a whole year's worth of material to summarize into notes. After making those revision resources also just keep them all together in one place and maybe make a note of what exactly you made as your revision resources. So if you make this habitual, you'll be able to focus more on actual revision and studying when it comes to the end of the year. Number five, you could use a coloured sticky note to mark any homework tasks. This just makes it really easy to see your homework tasks at a glance when you're flipping through your folder, so it's really easy to like find them and hand them into your teachers. You could alternatively create a homework file, which is one single envelope folder where you put all of your homework sheets so that it's all in one place and you can easily find it. Um, but if you're using a folder system, then I genuinely think that the other way works better. Number seven, make use of colour code systems. For example, if you're making notes in a folder or a notebook, you could include different colours for different types of notes. So for example, blue for lecture notes, green for seminar notes. Uh, red for personal research. Uh, this means that you can see things very easily at a glance when you're flicking through a notebook. Number eight, setting up a colour code system is also very useful for when you're doing readings. So for example, I would have a set colour for analysis, for my own thoughts, for uh, like key facts, for critics, and um, this just makes it a lot easier when you go to write up notes on this material. Number nine, you could also colour code your notes by subject, so have a set, set colour for each of your subjects, and even maybe have a set colour scheme for each of your subjects, so you could always write in blue or like red depending on what the subject is, but alternatively just a simple highlighter line at the top of the page is just as effective. And actually that leads on to number ten, which is really important, which is not to put pressure on yourself to make your notes look perfect, because at the end of the day that is not the intention of them, and not all of your notes are going to look incredibly aesthetic and and like the kind of thing that you see on Pinterest or Instagram. The goal is organisation and learning as opposed to aesthetics and it's really important not to get distracted by the latter. Sometimes revision notes will look neat and other times and often they will not and that is okay. Number 11, use some kind of planner. Have some kind of planning system which you use on a regular basis. The thing that I used all the way through my education was a planner, an academic planner, um, because it's, you know, it's a space where you can write down all of your tasks, have everything in one place, and the planner that I have used for the last few years is, of course, the academic planner from Pumpkin Productivity. I actually designed this and um, sell it on my website as kind of the ideal plan for students. I've included everything in here that I wish I'd had the whole way through school and university. Um, so we've got calendars, we've got weekly planning, we've got monthly planning, we've got dozens and dozens of 
planning sheets, like things I want to learn more about, recommendations, revision resources, clubs and societies. Everything you might need as a student is basically included within this. It's quite nice knowing that everything is in one place as opposed to in multiple notebooks because you don't want to waste time trading between lots of different notebooks looking for that one particular list or um, even like lugging all of those notebooks into school with you. It's got a beautiful woodland theme this year gorgeous maple leaves. This is available as both a physical product and a digital product and I'll leave a link to that down below if you're interested. Anyway, number 12, I also recommend having some kind of key. Yes, another key, I like keys. Um, if you want to do this, so here's an example of my key for example. Choose a set kind of hub for storing all of your notes for each of your subjects. I think it's pretty good for per subject to have like one place where you know that all of your stuff can be found. So for example, you might use a folder, you might use notebooks, you might use Notion, you might use Google Drive, you might use just a normal folder on your computer. And even if you use different note taking methods, like let's say you make a mind map, but you tend to do all of your notes on Google Drive, just make sure that you scan in that mind map and you put it into your Google Drive folder. This again, is just gonna hopefully help you not lose anything because it's really easy to do a piece of work and then just completely forget where you put it and be looking around for it and actually end up having to redo it which is something I've had to do in the past and keeping everything centralised I think is a really good idea. <laughs> My personal favourite platform to use is Notion. This is because it's really versatile and you can easily search for files. I put all of my notes on Notion for the last two years and I would really recommend it. If you're using a notebook I would recommend using an index system of some kind so you can easily find what you're looking for in your notebook. Number 17, every week spend 10 minutes noting down the things that you covered in each of your subjects um, and also make a quick note of anything to come back to in revision so that you kind of know where to start when it comes to exams and you don't accidentally miss anything important. Number 18, if you use an exercise book, and this is especially good for subjects like science and maths, colour code the sides of your book in red, amber and green depending on how much you understood it so that you know again whether you should come back to it in revision or not. This just means that you don't end up concentrating lots of time in revision to things that don't actually need that much time. You can use a calendar to see your time at a glance. At the beginning of the year I would recommend going through and adding in all of your big deadlines to this calendar so that you don't forget about any of them. If you need to remind yourself about something, put it on the day that you need to remember it as opposed to the day that you're writing it. So for example, if on the 20th my teacher says, oh remember to bring in your folder on Wednesday. There's no point in me writing that on the 20th because I might forget by the 23rd. Number 21, use the scan function on your phone so you can keep all of the key pages from textbooks in one place. Um, not all of the pages in your textbook will be important and this just means that you have a mini textbook of the things that are most useful for you in one place. Number 22, when you get a question wrong, immediately type it out into a document so that all of these questions are in one place and you can easily come back and redo them. If you use Notion, I would recommend putting all of your readings for each subject in one page. You can then search this for keywords if you can't remember where you found something. I have these pages for all of my reading and research. For everything you read, write a one line summary and also link the resource if you can so that you have everything in one place and you can easily find something if you need to come back to it. Number 24, make sure you have a folder for each subject on any device that you might save something. So for example, if you take notes on your computer or your iPad, just have a folder set up. It doesn't mean that you're gonna use it all that much, but um, it's better than just save it, saving it generally to a downloads folder and then losing it. Number 25, if you do write handwritten notes, then I would recommend scanning things in and making sure you have some digital copies, especially of the really important stuff, just in case you lose your folder or your notebook. Keep spare pens in your bag or locker in case you forget them. I used to have a spare pencil case which I would keep in my locker every day and I rarely used it but I often lent it out to friends who had forgotten their pencil cases and it was really useful on those days that I did forget to bring something in. Number 27, keep a small notebook in your pocket for quick reminders and notes. This is useful if you suddenly need to plan something or if you have an idea for an essay. Also, sticky notes, or again, this small notebook. It's really useful to have one of these easily accessible for when you have filed away all of your things at the end of class, but then the lecturer or teacher makes a quick note of something that you should do or something you should look into. You might think, oh, I'll remember this, but it's good just to write it down. Um, I recommend making a note of key information about that class. So for example, I've made this Notion page, which I will leave linked down below, but you could also do a physical one to stick at the beginning of your folder. 
Also, it's good just to download your specification or even print it out. Just have the file easily accessible so you can kind of go through and check off that you understand everything from the specification. And again, you might want to use the highlight system here. So if you learn about bond angles that week and you don't really understand that, you can just go onto the specification and highlight it in red as a reminder to come back to it when you're revising. Number 31, set internal deadlines for yourself to keep yourself accountable. And you can make these formal by putting them in your calendar. And this should just mean that you don't end up leaving things too much the last minute. If you have to bring in quite a few things for school or your lessons, uh, you might want to colour code your books with washi tapes. So uh, the things that you need for each of your subjects, folders, textbooks, pencil cases. Um, I did this at GCSE and it really worked for me and just made it easier when packing my bag. Before class, you might want to note down half a page of bullet points of the key things you want to bring up, have researched, things that are relevant, um, and also any questions that you have for teachers. This is an example of what a Notion page might look for me before class, and again, I've leave this link down below. And having this kind of plan of action for the class is a way of making sure that you make the most of that lesson. Um, especially at university, you don't tend to have that many contact hours if you're doing an arts and humanities degree, and um, I liked doing this just to make sure that I properly made the most out of every class I had. Keep one set page for questions for teachers that might come up while you're studying, just one space as opposed to multiple ones, and then you can have a tick box and just check these off as uh, you get the answers. Number 35, create a page on Notion for assessments at the beginning of the year. This is a page that you can add to as you get details about the assessment. Organize and have a space for everything in your desk so that you're not constantly looking for things and kind of things get messy. Also clear and tidy your desk every night so that it's ready for the next day. This is more of a mindset thing than everything. I think when your space is decluttered, you just feel less cluttered and it's easier to focus on things. Think ahead when packing your bag. And if you ever realize that you've forgotten something at school, make a note of that so that you can pack it for future. It worked for me having a list of the things to always have in my school bag, which I could kind of refer back to at the beginning of every term. Plan your tasks the night before so you can wake up and kind of get things done and you're not floundering about, not really sure what to do. Make use of the different modes, which you can now get on iPhone. So you can create different modes for study, for personal, for work, for leisure, um, for health, for sleep. And for each of these settings, only particular apps will be visible. And you can also set timers for this so that it automatically switches at 9 p.m. for example to only your sleep apps. Every week you might want to have a bit of a reset, including checking your bag to see if there's anything you need to top up on. Create a reset routine, which you can do every Friday or every Sunday, which will help you reset for the new academic week. Make revision resources as you are going along. This refers back to the topic test thing, but Quizlet sets are so good to make. The key vocabulary, especially for a language, adding to this after every lesson is really going to save you time. So for Spanish, after every single class, I would go through and add in the key vocabulary that I had learnt. This means that gradually you build up this incredible collection of words. To keep on top of personal reading during the school year, you could make a note of reading goals by writing the books you want to read out, and then you can colour these in when you've read them. you might want to try setting monthly goals and weekly goals so that you're more proactive and can get ahead so for example you could say this week i will revise cell structure for biology you tend to be more ambitious than if you're just setting a daily goal because you can set something larger so make a note of key feedback from tests and homework as soon as you have received it you could put this on post-it notes or in a single space like in a notebook or your planner i first heard about this from fave films and i love it i've been doing it for the last seven eight months and it's a game changer for decluttering your mind and just feeling more focused she uses the two minute rule so the idea is that you set aside 30 minutes for example to do all of your tasks which take under two minutes so that's responding to emails that's you know quickly organizing something in your folder taking out your bin these small tasks which build up and can kind of distract you and stress you out if you don't do them and you don't want to be doing these as soon as they come up um, and as soon as you think of them because that will just serve as a distraction and you'll end up not being able to focus properly on your studying, basically. When you're sitting down to study, set out everything you will need to eliminate distractions. Try breaking down big tasks into smaller tasks because this will make it more manageable. If you often forget your water bottle, you could try keeping a collapsible water bottle in the bottom of your bag just for emergencies because I think hydration is one of the most important things when studying. I'd say like water and drinking enough is my number one study essential because I just can't focus if I haven't had enough water. 
this is your sign right the second to go and drink a glass of water because you probably are dehydrated maybe you're not maybe you're drinking a glass of water right now but it's really easy to get dehydrated and so many of us are and we often don't realize that we're dehydrated too try waking up a little bit earlier than you usually would so that you're not in a rush have a set envelope folder or box file for spare sheets so that they don't end up just lying around places and getting lost um you know that everything miscellaneous is in this one place and then just kind of regularly maybe like once every two weeks go through this folder and see if there's anything which you can file away or throw away and on the same grain there also have a small box for any miscellaneous items in your room so just something like a small basket by your desk and then finally try setting daily habits for yourself so don't go too overboard i'd say like four or five is quite a good number and ideally these should be things which are prioritizing your health and self-care mental and physical health um so for example you might say i want to meditate every day i want to go on a walk every day i want to eat my five portions of fruit and veg i want to drink enough water and then keep this somewhere where you will see it so maybe stuck up on your desk and just tick it off every day to keep yourself accountable with that and just make sure that you're looking after yourself because the academic year will get stressful very quickly. I think we're always surprised at how quickly we we start to get anxious about things and so just make sure that you're taking time for self-care because you won't be organized, you won't feel on top of things if you're not looking after yourself. Probably the most important piece of advice that I can give. Strangely, it is so strange to think that this is my first year outside of academics, like with the new year starting soon and I know that I'm not going back in. I'm excited for this year but also I'm very jealous as I hear about all the exciting modules that people are doing. It feels, it feels weird to not be preparing for back to school but I wish everyone who's going back the absolute best. Good luck and I hope that some of these tips are useful. I just wanted to collate all of this advice from like the whole of my time in education in one video in one place um so not all of these tips are gonna work for you but i hope that maybe some of these will anyway thank you so much for watching and i hope that you have a productive week